what is going on everybody welcome to the live stream had to do it uh again on a friday night because we've got stuff going on tomorrow and it's just not gonna work but that's okay uh at this point i think most people know i'm just gonna kind of do live streams either on fridays or saturdays oh we need to adjust because I can see things on my camera that I can't see on the stream. Well, actually, it's really just one knife. It's just the Hinder Emmet. It's kind of floating up here by itself. But I gotta have my Instagram plug in there, right? That has to be there. <laughs> Let's move this up, move this up. We'll put her right there so everybody knows how to follow me on Instagram move these down just a little bit more and then i'll start paying attention to the chat which is what i should be doing hello everybody let's see here snuggle tummy uh he says is the v8 the oh metal complex is the v8 the power of the knife to me <laughs> thank you shout out to snuggle tummy for apparently um being awesome in general in the knife community we were talking about it in chat before um, before everything got started here, just being super generous and a genuinely nice guy. So that's great. And yeah, actually, Snuggle Tummy always has really nice uh, comments in, uh, under my videos and is always a joy to interact with. So that's cool. Welcome. Yeah, Floydian, Keith Luster, Jesse Begley, Blame Dexter. Hello. How is everybody doing tonight? Um, <laughs> only seven hinders and MC claims to like them. Yeah, five of them are actually mine. Um, so just so you guys know, I switched the tie scale from the non-flipper to the S45VN Spanto just because, because, uh, because I've got a lot of parts and I like to switch stuff up. Actually, I love the Jade. I, I couldn't not put it on something. So I was like, I'll just put it on the uh, non-flipper and oh, man, this thing is awesome now with a Jade. I'm, I'm actually really, really enjoying it with uh, a Jade G10 scale. I just like how it looks, so that's cool. So I think the Jade is gonna hang out on this guy for a while, for sure. Yeah, I figured some, some of you might have wanted a break from the media. Uh, so yeah, of course. Uh, let's see here. What's my opinion on Crewware? I just got the new DLT Pair 3. I think crew wear, um, by, by what the composition is, I think should be excellent. If I'm not mistaken, crew wear is tough and has decent edge retention and is not stainless. Uh, but it's, it's kind of an oddball, but so, but it sharpens up easy considering all of those, uh, the, the, um, the ratios. I, I think what I've read is that there, it's kind of like, I'm not saying it's like XHP. No, it's very different in terms of like the balancing, but in terms of like what people say about it for EDC, it's very rare that you'll find something negative about crew wear on the internet, as long as it's heat treated properly amidst the knife community, much like XHP. People just really like the balance of that steel and the composition, right? There's not a lot of controversy. So yeah, I think uh, the Para 3, obviously a lot of people were interested in that. Those things freaking flew out the window. Uh, let's see here. I have a crew wear Shaman, love it. Super great performance steel. Well, there you go. I'd trust Floydian for sure. Uh, hi from England, it's 3.03 here, LOL. Wait a minute. Is it 3.03 AM? Where does the sun set in the West? Yeah, so it's 3.03 AM. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> well, thanks for popping into the live stream. Uh, maybe I can, <laughs> I'd like to, I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where I want to say, I mean, you know, maybe you'll be tired after the live stream, but that's, uh, the suggestion there is that you're going to get sleepy watching my live stream. <laughs> uh, Sam L says thoughts up to this point on your new Thai shaman. It's effing excellence. This is the joy of my world right now. And I thought the new pocket clip was, was gonna be in. It looks like it's probably gonna be tomorrow or Monday. Um, and then after the pocket clip, it'll probably hang out with me for probably the rest of November. And then in December, it will be sent off. Well, the shaman won't. The scales will be sent off to be, um, to be textured. This has completely broken in 
for whatever reason, the tie scales actually, I don't know why, I, I can't figure out why. This thing is completely and totally drop shut now and solid on the lockup and it's centered up perfectly. I could not get all three of those things exactly this way with the G10 scales. I don't know why, maybe because they flex as I tighten things down. I'm not really sure, but the titanium scales fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, it's everything that I um, that I wanted it to be for sure. Uh, Apex and the KME with live metal complex makes for a good Friday night. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad that you're listening while you're uh, while you're doing your your uh, sharpening and stuff. That's awesome. Sometimes it's a matter of aligning the liners just right. It might be. It might be that the uh, milling, the internal milling on the titanium scales actually lines the um, the cartridge liners up better, and that's a. The precision work on these scales is is completely out of this world. Uh, Flytanium absolutely nailed it. There are no gaps. There are no awkward spots. They are premium. They're expensive, 120 bucks or so, but in my opinion, worth it. When this thing is done, um, let me think about this. Three, 320 plus another 20 for the clip, 340. I have no idea where the texturing is going to run. It's going to end up being for a four hundred dollars salmon, probably. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> it's going to be an expensive salmon. Let's see here. If you can get a secondhand smock. I'd go for that. Uh, you guys are talking about something else. Um, what's a good self defense knife? I don't know. I'm not the self defense expert of YouTube by a long shot. I, I'm. Um, I, I review knives as tools, right? I respect the part of the knife community who practices that, but mm, I can't really, yeah, I can't really, um, I can't really comment on that. I don't, I don't know. Um, you like the fixed blade hinder? Yes, I absolutely love it. Yeah, the Emmet is really great. I, I gotta be honest, I don't have an enormous, uh, you know, like need for a fixed blade in my day-to-day -day life, but I still appreciate them. It's you guys don't see a lot of fixed blades on this channel, and it's because my interest is it mainly lies with folding knives, right? But if I see a fixed blade I want, I'm gonna go for it, and that's what happened with the Emmet. How am I liking the K2 so far? It's freaking excellent! Oh my god, this thing is ridiculous. I did the unboxing today, and I was so pumped. I sat actually sat upstairs and flipped this for probably 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, this thing is really cool. That fat blue carbon fiber is just, man, this is cool. And a zirconium backspacer and pocket clip. Man, that's cool. Very, very cool. Hey, Kiefer, what's up, man? Uh, good fidget, preferably flipper under 150. A good fidget flipper, flipper under 150. Um, I mean, you're, you're talking Kaiser territory and you're talking like some of the um, lower end Wii knives, uh, some of the really high end, like uh, here's, a, here's a great fidget knife that cost me, I think about $95. I bought this for myself. This is the um, Civivi Ortis or Ortis. Sounds weird to over enunciate the T. Ortis in carbon fiber and Damascus. And, uh, oh God, this is really good. The standard, the, here's the thing. I got a, I got an Ortis, a standard Ortis coming in from another viewer. When I realized it wasn't G10 and it was FRN, it just broke my heart because I love the profile of this. Hey, thanks for the donation, Knife Watch. Thoughts on the MBK Old Guard. Thanks for your hard work. Hey, no problem, man. There's lots more to come. Um, the MBK Old Guard, I'm not familiar with it. If, uh, if you could send me a picture of it on Instagram, I'd be more than happy to give give uh, my thoughts on just, I mean, the aesthetics of it for sure. Um, but anyways, the standard version of this, I was so pumped about until I realized it was FRN and not G10. And I was like, oh, God. So then I found out they do a carbon fiber one in Damascus and I bought it almost out of spite. <laughs> this is crazy cool. And you can use the, uh, you can do the reverse flick and it is God dang, stupid thin behind the edge. This is a laser beam, contoured, even textured a little bit. You guys aren't picking it up. There's lines here, faux bolster. Man, checklist, check, check, check. God dang, that thing is cool. Very, very nice. Um, 
Somebody asking about the lightning. I got an entertaining video for you guys coming on Sunday. I actually uh, did an in-depth discussion about, because uh, whenever I talk about Microtech OTFs, there's at least one person that goes, you know, don't spend that much money on a Microtech, you can just buy a lightning, it's the same thing. That's how they sound in my head. Um, it's not. <laughs> but the Lightning is a good OTF for 40 bucks, right? So I, uh, I tried to, I, what I did was I made a reference video so that I can, um, there was this big law, I found this big cesspool conversation going on under one of my Microtech videos. All these people saying that obviously I'd never handled a Microtech and were saying that they were essentially the same knife. And I was like, no, no, they're not. <laughs> Absolutely, they're not. But I, I, I did a video, a comprehensive uh, breakdown between the, the you know, Microtech uh, OTFs or high-end US-made OTFs versus the Lightning and which crowds they might appeal to. Not saying that necessarily one is like absolute junk and the other one you have to go with it. No, it's like certain pe for certain people, the Lightning's going to be better. And for certain people, you know, higher-end OTFs are going to be better. Um, so uh, Sorry about that. Um, I don't know what happened. Hang on a sec. We are looking at my ceiling. <laughs> okay, thanks, YouTube. That was random. Um, anyways, we're back. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what um, what happened. Where did where did I cut off? What was the last thing I was talking about before um, before the live stream cut out? Let me know. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. JBFL asked, how's that hoback sliver? If you're still in here, the sliver is pretty cool. For a small, slender knife. Stasa23, thank you so much for that donation. He says, hello, peeps. Hope, every hope everyone is having a great Friday. Very kind of you, Stasa. Please, seriously. I mean, I probably say this in every live stream because I legitimately like Stasa's channel. I enjoy his content. If you are not subscribed to Stasa, Go subscribe to his channel, please. There is a wealth of knowledge and information there. He's very entertaining, lots of knife content. And again, that's what we're all here for is knife stuff, right? So go check out his channel. The Juicer, four nine, uh, thank you so much for that donation. He says, nice ceiling. Yeah, it is, it's uh, duct work and you saw some of the, the ventilation and uh, the white, uh, they look like bed sheets. Those are diffuser uh, sheets to bounce light down on the, uh, on the knives. Wow, the quality of the live stream is excellent. Look at all those pixels, beautiful. I'm gonna reload this page for myself. You guys are still gonna be able to hear me, but I'm not gonna be able to see the chat for just a moment. Um, so give me one sec here. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, sorry about the quality. I I'm hoping that the quality gets turned back up here for a sec. Let's do, let me kick it up back up for myself. There we go. Oh, and the, actually, the positioning of things is not what I thought it was. <laughs> Man, YouTube has a weird thing with what I'm seeing on the phone and what people are actually seeing on the table here. All right, there we go. Yeah, 720p. You should be able to set the uh, live stream quality 720p. The the when I do uh, videos, I'm able to control the exposure, so that's why it's like some of the night like this one's really washed out because you're getting the full blast of the lighting and none of the exposure settings. I can't, I can't change it. So you're, it, everything's like brightened way up. Um, let's see your thoughts on Olamic pricing. Um, Olamic makes semi-custom knives. And in a lot of cases, they make full custom knives. Actually, considering the competition out there for what they're doing, I think Olamic pricing is, and, and this is going to frustrate some people, I have always been extremely impressed with what Olamic brings to the table and what they charge for their knives. Yes, you're gonna pay somewhere between four and $800 on average for one of their knives, but considering what you're getting and what their actual competition is, their actual competition is not brands like We or Bestec, right, or even Riot. Uh, these are USA made. They are at the very, at the bare minimum, they are semi-custom and in some cases, full custom knives. Those full custom ones that they do, they keep the price under a thousand, right? Well, oftentimes under eight hundred. It's just amazing. I love Olamic Cutlery. I've never had a bad experience with them. Eugene is an excellent person. The few interactions I've had with him, and uh, if you dig around on the internet, you're going to find that most people are really, really happy with their Olamic knives, and that uh, most people's opinion of Eugene 
and the company as a whole. Very positive. Um, how often does a Harpoon Spanto XM18, how, how often do they come out? Boy, not often. Um, the, they did this run in S35VN, I don't know how long ago, and then they did a recent one in, uh, this is S35VN, the, the recent one was 20CV, and they were gone in a flash. Probably once every four months at least. More like once every six months, I think, something like that. Um, let's see here. Koenig did a big drop today. If anyone's chasing, keep a lookout over the next week. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you, Deacon. Um, keep your eyes out for uh, the Koenig Arius and probably the Goblin, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, maybe, I don't know, but pro probably the Arius. That's what most people are after. They'll go quick. They are expensive. They will go quick. Uh, yeah, the Koenigs, definitely. Yeah, the Koenigs you're going to pay a lot of money for, for sure. I think they come, they start at like 550 The uh, The ones with the extra... Uh, fin you know the extra finish work and the extra inlay work, right? Those are gonna those are gonna run a lot more money. Flip the sliver. Okay, this thing's got an adjustable detent on it, and I've been uh, playing with that a little bit. Got it tuned exactly right, exactly, and it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother the more that I play with it. You have to keep you have to keep in mind this is a not not a big blade. There's not a lot of weight and mass behind it, and it is very smooth. Oh boy. Very, very smooth. I really like this guy. Nice and snappy considering how low profile the flipper tab is. Uh, Michael Godet, thank you so much for that very generous donation. What are your thoughts on the new AR RPG 9? You mean the AR R RPM 9 uh, steel? Where do you think that will steer the budget knife sector? Good question. AR RPM 9 is essentially, while the composition is not exactly the same as 9CR 18 MOV, it is very, very similar to 9CR 18 MOV, but 9CR is an ingot form steel, right? And while it's good, good enough for the budget world, in fact, a lot of people really like it, right? The um, the powder forms AR RPM 9 is going to perform better and it's going to have better, you know, particle distribution. I think it's probably one of the best, one of the better budget steels that you can get right now. I think it's very welcome. I think, uh, you know, picking up something in that steel if you find a knife that you really really like and you're wondering is that steel you know going to work for me yeah i think uh most people are going to find that it's pretty awesome the edge retention is decent um very easy to sharpen from what i understand stainless and it's powder forms right powder form budget steel yeah heck yeah man that's awesome i i think that's great i i mean from everything that i've read uh i think it's excellent JBFL, welcome to the Knights of the Round Knights. Raise your swords. Let's all hail JBFL. Anybody wondering what that's all about? Uh, everybody in the chat who has little helmets beside their names and is using those sword emojis that you're probably not finding in your own little emoji section, those are the Knights of the Round. They've joined my membership program. Uh, if you join, you gain access to the badging system, which you get a little helmet and it changes colors depending on how long you've been a knight. And you also gain access to every single one of the exclusive Excalibur emojis that I've created. It's all swords from popular video games, movies, things like that. It's just fun, right? Uh, if you want to join, you can open up the description of the live stream you're watching right now and click the very first link. Uh, it is not expensive. I have set it at $1.99 a month and it'll stay that way. So if you want to be a part of Knights of the Round, you'll have the uh, emojis in live chat and the badging system and... Uh, you'll also have the badges under every single one of my videos anytime you comment, right? Let's me know you're a knight, right? You've joined the membership program. Not G, not DG, welcome back to the Knights of the Round. I can tell because you're, uh, the helmet that you've got is already purple. So welcome back, buddy. Let's all hail not DG as well. Very cool. Yo, you got a Protex Strider SMG. Yes, I do. Were you the one asking earlier about that? Uh, mine is, uh, mine's from an older run. And it's in uh, full titanium. Uh, number two of 40, actually. This knife was given to me by my very good friend, Jeff. Very early on in the channel, uh, Jeff Goodnow actually um, was uh, one of the big um, supporters of this channel early on. Provided me with enormous amount of content. Some crazy knives that I otherwise would not be able to get my hands on. He sent this one in for review. And then he said, keep it. So I will forever be appreciative of Jeff, not just for this knife, but for everything that he's, you know, done and helped with, right? He was very selfless. And I love this thing. It is a freaking tank. 
<laughs> but I love, I love that it's in full titanium. It's so hard to get a freaking automatic knife in titanium. Bam! I love this thing. Epic. Pearl inlay on the button. Love it. Uh, what is the sliver? This guy, J. Kobach sliver. Uh, titanium and CPM 20 CV. Adjustable detent. Obviously, I mean, this feels very Hoback. I've only, only, uh, only handled three now, but I'm getting a sense of what his knives are like. Yeah. These are built really well. I, I had never handled a Hoback, and man, yeah, those are built exceptionally well, for sure. Those are in the same price point as, like, Hinder knives and Chris Reeve knives. XM18 versus Eclipse Ergos. Thanks. Um, so, the Eclipse has more comfortable ergonomics, for sure. <laughs> Definitely more comfortable ergonomics. The problem is, is that you're quite a ways from the cutting edge. There's no option to choke up on them. Uh, on uh, hinderer knives, you do have the option, right? A little bit uncomfortable. My fingers don't fit perfectly into the choil, but if we're comparing a non-flipper, this is preferable. This is okay, this comfortable here. This position is more comfortable. Not so much on the flippers. In the only position that you have for the Eclipse, I would say those ergonomics are better. The Eclipse was actually originally designed as an evolution of the XM18 and just didn't take off, I think, maybe the way that Hinderer planned, even, you know, even though it is still an extremely popular design. The Eclipse is hyper underrated. <laughs> I will look at an Eclipse at the exact same, like if there were more blade shapes for the Eclipse, I would be buying them at the end if the, there were more triways. I'd be buying them just as often as XM18s. There just aren't yet. Um, the Eclipse is every bit as good of a knife as the XM18. Uh, absolutely. Sliver, where can you buy it? Uh, you can buy it at DLT. I'd appreciate it if you opened up my description and clicked on that, uh, that link that says shop at DLT trading first. <laughs> That's my affiliate link. If you click on that and then buy something, it does benefit the channel. But you don't have to do that. That's just why I put the links down there. Yeah, you can pick up the sliver at DLT Trading. $475, I believe, is what the sliver goes for. Uh, do you have a hidden whiskers? No, I do not. I don't have a whisker. Protec whiskers, no. But I have reviewed it, uh, if you want to check that out. DTOM Knives and Gear. Thank you so much for that donation. Just bought a Spyderco Python. Is your opinion still the same since the review? Yes, it is. Man, if that thing had a different pocket clip and the detent was a little bit heavier and those little little corners, if you've got one, you know those little corners are just a wee bit sharp. God, that would have been a freaking home run. But it is still an awesome knife. And I think that, you know, even you, you owning it now, I'm going to guess you probably really like it. And uh, I, I don't blame you. Um, it, it's, uh, it's one of the most beautiful things that Spyderco has, in fact, it, it is the most beautiful knife that Spyderco has ever produced. And despite those little nitpicks, it's still an excellent tool. It still locks up hard, it's still dependable, right? And it's a freaking integral. Integral, however you want me to say that. What's the blue knife at the far right? Sasa, this is the, um, Riot K2. This is the collector, one of the collector editions, I guess, through Knife Joker. Uh, and it's got the fat blue carbon fiber. Um, oh boy, this is a good one. Um, you can get a full, uh, you can get a full look at this um, um, right now on Dr. Frankie's channel. And I agree with everything he has said about it. Uh, it is, oh boy, it's good. It's very good. Uh, let's see here. Thoughts on S45 VN? I mean, it's it's an incremental diff uh, increase in. Uh, I mean, it's very very similar to S35 VN and S30V. Supposedly, at optimal heat treat, right? Your edge retention is going to be similar to S30V. Not going to be quite uh, as uh, the the uh, the sharpen uh, the sharpenability or ease of sharpening is going to be about the same as S35VN. Not as tough as S35VN, a little tougher than S30V, but substantially more stainless than both. Actually, you could say it's approaching the stainless qualities of M390, which is impressive. Um, I think, uh, you know, between S30V, S35VN, and S45VN, I honestly think S, uh, S45VN is probably gonna be the better choice for most people. Not everybody. But I think most people. 
are most people going to notice the differences in day-to-day -day use according to what I've read on um, knife steel nerds? Probably not, right? Some people will, but most people won't. It's a cool new flashy steel that has a, a minor change in the composition and, and uh, well, minor change, the, the, the composition yields minor change between those other two competitor steels. Not, they're not competitor steels, it's the same company. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be just enough better that some people will notice. Um, let's see here. Do you know about Cerberus scales? No, I don't. I don't know what those are. Um, but Bob, feel free to tell me about them. Neves Knives, hello. Jared and Karen Neves, everybody. I'm sure you guys all know Neves Knives. And if you don't, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, go subscribe to Neves Knives for sure. Um, Jared and Kara are wonderful people and they are extremely entertaining. I, I have found a lot of joy just watching uh, their channel, watching them interact. And there's also a wealth of knowledge there too. They know what they're talking about and uh, yeah, excellent people. Very wonderful, wonderful members of the knife community. PM2 versus the smock. Um, <laughs> it's hard because the PM2 is an excellent tool, but my love for uh, my love for the um, the PM2 has has dwindled. I am I, I my modern me. You know, ask me five years ago. I don't know. I was just I was so like in love with the PM2. I like the smock more. It's fidgety. It's cool. It's new, right? Cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, Cerberus made the skinny pair of three scales that were on my Maximet. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Well, yeah, then uh, those were cool scales. I like the the change in. Um, it was it that they they deleted the hump that made it kind of fatter at one end. Yeah, it's a cool mod for sure. Oh, Kara's here as well. Hello, Kara. Uh, Muhammad Amar says, MC. I don't know if you have the answers I seek, but does anyone know how I can get my hands on a Dark Timber Knives 1911 Elite fixed blade? Please, it's the current grail along with the Harpoon Span. So, from what I remember, Kyle, was that you who sent that to me? Kyle Roberts? From what I remember, that's one of the most sought after fixed blades in its tier. And I don't know a lot about that world, but I know that a lot of people want that knife and it is not easy to get. I think that's a, is that a full custom or is it a semi-custom fixed blade? I can't remember. It was very impressive, and I think that's an excellent knife to you know to to have as a grail. Um, I don't know how you can get your hands on one. I'm sorry. Um, let's see here. Carried my pair of three M390 for the first time in a while today. Used it exactly zero times. <laughs> I think all of us can relate to that, at least a little bit. There's Stoss that says all dark timbers are hard to find. Which, Kyle, did you send me the 1911 Dark Timber? Uh, the fixed blade? Yeah, yeah, you did send, send me that. Okay, yeah, that is what I thought. Um, Kyle might have one. <laughs> I don't know if he's still got it, but you sure can, uh, you can message him about it. Excuse me, I'm enjoying a pineapple, Bud, I mean Gatorade. Um, now... Nah. Not the tastiest thing in the whole world. <clears throat> uh, Tree Stabbing Troy says, hi, first time here. Welcome, Tree Stabbing Troy. I do this every Friday or Saturday night. Unless we go somewhere and it's impossible for me to do it. But I think pretty consistently for the last however many months, it's been every Friday or Saturday night. Uh, let's see here. I love knives, but it's sad where I live. Uh, basically, every knife costs 30 to 40 percent more than in the U.S. My place. Where are you? Are you in Canada? Um, that's unfortunate. I, I do feel bad for people who have to spend so much more money on the same thing. That's a bummer. I feel for you. Um, I'll, I'll keep providing content that you can watch. I don't know if that helps at all. It probably makes it worse. I'm sorry. Uh, thoughts on the XM18 3-inch recurve? I think it's interesting that they brought the recurve to to a uh, um, production model again. I think they did a short run of XM18 three and a half inch production recurves a long time ago, maybe in generation three. I could be wrong about that. For a long time, it was a custom only blade. I'm not a huge fan of recurves, but if you're not afraid to sharpen them, 
Um, there's a huge benefit in cutting performance because of the way that the recurve draws material into the main belly of the blade. So if you do a lot of, you know, I guess slicing or the diagonal cutting tasks, yeah, um, then on the three inch, I think the recurve is accentuated because the blade geometry is a little bit, it, it's thinner on the spine and thinner behind the edge than the three and a half inch. What happened to the VECP? Sold to a patron. For anybody who doesn't know, all of my patrons get, uh, when I sell a knife, uh, I, my patrons get first grab and I make ridiculous discounts. <laughs> I mean, it's, I sell my, anybody in here who's a patron will tell you I sell my knives cheap on purpose because my Patreon or my patrons have supported me and made this whole thing possible. So I want to make sure that if I sell something that they have the opportunity to get something that in some cases is hard to get and for a substantial discount and that's been well taken care of, right? And then that uh, the, the money that I um, get from the sale goes right back into usually another knife purchase that I turn into content. So that's generally how I, um, how I do that. Yeah, there you go. Snuggle tummy knows. MC give out fat deals. <laughs> I do. I, I generally, sometimes I cut that, uh, one of the knives, I cut the price in half. Brand, it was brand new. It was the, um, the Artisan Cutlery Great Whites. Um, it was cool, but I mean, it just, I didn't have room for it in my collection. And um, I, it was, it was less than that, actually. It was, uh, at the, the retail's 266, 266. I think I sold it for a hundred bucks. <laughs> um but yeah, I do. Um, so that's one of the benefits of Patreon is you get uh, access to sales when I sell my stuff and it's usually really cheap. So um, let's see here. Oh, Florian, you bought the Ziba. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that, that was a great knife and I, I remember the, the deal on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, M, thank you so much for the donation. I almost missed the live stream. But you didn't. You're here, and it's so, we're only halfway through. So no worries. Hey, seriously, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I got the post on Instagram out loud. I know not all of you guys follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, here it is right here. Take a moment. Follow me on Instagram. I made the story later this afternoon, so not everybody knew. I didn't make a community post, and that's because right now in my community post is highlighted uh, Kyle Lanfear's channel, which I really want people to go and subscribe to. So I sacrificed a, uh, a community post to make sure that that stayed up for a little bit longer. Wow. Oh, I'm so not, I'm, that made me sound, I'm such a nice person that I left it. No, it was more important to me that that community post stayed up than notifying a few more people about my live stream. Um, but there's still 154 people in here. So thank you. That's cool. I, I thought there'd be way less, but you guys are awesome, so thank you. Um, let's see here. If you wait, hit me up if you want to sell the Hellhounds CT. Oh, the Combat Showdown, John Adams. I'll tell you what, man. If I had bought that for myself, I might make you a deal on it. But my wife bought me that knife, so unfortunately, I will never ever get rid of that thing. But yeah, hey, you know what? I do make crazy deals on knives all the time, though. So. And there's, I have a $1 tier on Patreon. You can actually, if you want to, you can gain access to those knife, those knife sales for literally $1 a month. Um, so the money that you would save on those knives is substantially more than what Patreon would cost you. I do that on purpose so that if people want to join, they can. I do a lot of other cool stuff on Patreon too that you'll find out once you're through the gate, so to speak. Um, I'm very, very active on Patreon extremely active it's very important to me that the people who have helped me build this channel uh have uh you know basically that there's a way for me to give back to them so yes my patreon is extremely active um let's see here yeah kyle lanfear is awesome i like his content he's funny he jokes around and he says what he thinks and that's good right you can't just say what you think other people want you to say right you can't just tell people what they want to hear, right? You have to say what you think. And I can tell Kyle's honest. Not that the other YouTube channels that I recommend aren't, right? It's just extremely apparent. Within one video watching Kyle's content, I was like, that guy will tell you exactly what he thinks 100% of the time, and it's very apparent. What's my most carried auto? Right now, it's the Combat Troodon, honestly, but probably in second place is that Protec SNG. Um, I really like I only have... 
Do I only have two autos right now? Let me think. Yeah, I think I've only got two automatic knives. Um, the combat Troodon is was carried the most between those two, but the 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 on the last the last time I did my most carried, it, it, it was the other way around. Oh, hey, Mr. McKenzie, thanks. SNG is my favorite of yours. Yeah, the the SNG auto is probably the greatest side opening automatic knife in existence. That thing is freaking powerful. If the uh, if the Protect Rock Eye was still available, I would put that one up again. My dream auto is a titanium rock eye automatic. But and they did make one, a, a few of them. They were expensive. They did make a few, if I remember correctly. And someone stainless steel, which is crazy. Um, but they don't make those anymore. So bummer. Um, Kyle says, according to Brian on his Instagram, the Evo Typhoons will be shipping to him in the next week or so. I saw that. And I started breathing really heavily and sweating, uh, and I ate a whole bunch of beef jerky because I was, you know, nervous and excited. And then I took a nap. <laughs> oh, I'm so pumped. Excuse me. Sorry to wet my whistle. Hang on. One moment. Un momento. Unimento filler dialogue because I don't have anything else to say because I can't read the chat right now. I'm sorry. So for whatever reason, I'm doing this in sing song voice. Sorry. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll tell you what. Here's what I want to see when I come back to the chat. What's your vote for the best budget knife of 2020? A knife that actually came out in 2020. Vote for the best budget knife. I'd like to know what you guys think and how it corresponds with my current thoughts right now, which seem to be changing every two weeks or so because there are so many freaking legendary budget knives have come out this year. This has been the biggest year for budget knives ever <laughs> by, by like a thousand percent. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, boy, oh man, there's so many good ones. It's freaking crazy. You guys have uh, already picked out a bunch of mine. I'm going to have to split. At the end of the year, I'm going to do a sort of, you know, like best knives of 2020 in different categories like every YouTuber does, right? I'll do that, but I'm thinking about splitting it into two different videos because I have so many oddball, like, I don't want to say awards, like anybody gives a shit about Hey, did you hear you won the award on Metal Complex's channel? Who's that? <laughs> you know, like, I no those, a lot of them don't care if they get an award or not. Like, they already know their knives are good, right? So, I, I want to split it into two different videos so that I can, you know, basically say what I want to say about the knives that really have struck me this year. So, yeah. Yeah, the Praxis, I don't think the Praxis came out in, in 2020, but it certainly is one of the best budget knives ever. Can I see the new Jade Hinder? Yeah, so actually this is, the S45VN Spanto came with the Jade scale, but I put the type, this is my first uh, Spanto with the uh, Choil since my very first Hinderer. That's how long it's been since I've owned just the standard Spanto, the flagship blade shape. So I put the tie scale on it because I've never had a flipper Spanto with the choil. I had a choilless one with the choil with a tie scale. And it's cool that it's, oh, excuse me, that was terrible. And S45VN, John M. Walker, are you ever going to be on the Knife Nuts podcast? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. I talk with Levon quite a bit. Um, I I don't know. It's never it's never come up. Um, I like Levon. I've enjoyed chatting with him. He and I have very similar taste in music, um, but I you know I don't know. I'm pretty new uh, to this world. I mean, this like YouTube and Instagram world compared to a lot of the people that he has, and then Brian and O that they have on their their show. I don't know. I, I'm not sure that it would be to their benefit, but I, you know, if, if he offered, I sure wouldn't turn it down. I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of the podcast. Here's the, um, the Jade is actually, Jade Scale is now on my, what was my previous Excalibur, which is the M390 Fullard Spear. And I, I really like the look at this. This is, 
this is hot stuff man i like that jade and it's the real nice translucent stuff not like this freaking you know flu booger stuff that's on the um the pm2 no this is the nice stuff oh boy i i really like that that's that's nice um let's see here uh i would i would have to show you up i don't know what you're talking about sorry um let's see here what's the trophy for knife of the year look like <laughs> i don't know I, I should make something right just do like the office and do different colored yogurt lids <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's too easy to make myself laugh that's not a good trait my wife's always like you laugh at your own jokes so often and nobody else thinks it's funny but you sorry <laughs> sorry I do that at home too uh, JG10 just doesn't appeal to me, and I know you can rid die, but it's not for me. Hey, it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's definitely not for everybody. I think you either love it or you hate it, you know? It's either, like, beautiful or it just looks like crap. <laughs> A pickle with arms flexing. <laughs> for the award? Yeah. Oh, a golden pickle. That'd be hilarious. I have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I should just make different colored pickle stickers and um, and uh, give them awards, yeah. Or I could use my night helmets for that, but the pickle would be funnier. M, thanks for the donation. Will you say hi to Mikey, please? He's buggy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mikey, what's up, man? Hello. Um, I hope you're enjoying the live stream. And M, I hope I've been appropriate. I probably haven't been. Hello, Mikey. How you doing? Uh, let's see here. Does Jade get dirty in your pocket? Uh, it probably will. It'll probably show dirt and crap more often than not. But I, I think you can probably just scrub it off. I don't. I don't. I don't know that it'll sink. I mean, oil. Like if you work around oil or, or some residue that could seep into it. I mean, if you can rit dye it, right? Then it might be difficult. I don't know. I've heard that Jade can do that, but you probably, for the most part, you probably can just scrub it out. Flexing pickles, bronze, silver, gold, perfect. I want to be careful about that because with new people, if I. Like people who know me, I I know you guys know that I that I go to the gym, but I, you know I joke around about that a lot because it's funny, right? And you can't take that too seriously. You just look like a you just look like a douche. I joke around about that, but I feel like new people would come in and be like, "What's this guy's deal? <laughs> is he is he trying to literally flex?" You know. So I I try to keep that out. Of it. I made that one post on Instagram and immediately regretted it, and so I just don't. I just haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'd like to hear you and Nick talk about Jade. Does he not like? It? I think he does. He hates Jade, doesn't he? Yeah. There, are, uh, Nick Shabazz and I agree on a lot of stuff, but I think there's probably an equal amount of stuff that we don't agree on, and that's okay, right? This night, this this whole world would be incredibly boring if everyone was like, "Yep, I agree. That's great," and this isn't great. And now we'll just sit here with nothing to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I like the contrast. I don't like salt. Right? I don't like people telling me how to, you know, how to run my channel. That is my biggest pet peeve. I'm, tell I'm, I'm literally giving people ammunition on how to troll me. I don't get upset about much, but man, one thing that burns me is when people jump into my comment section and just say... You need to change this completely and do this completely different. Just with my limited experience with your channel, and I want something changed just for me. Kick rocks. Take a hike, tourist. Sorry to sound elitist. I am welcoming. So I'm going on a rant here. Sorry, guys. I got my feet up, and I'm looking up at the ceiling talking about this. I am very welcoming to new people. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, for new people, yeah, absolutely welcome. Man, when people just jump in and they're like, change something just for me, man. No, <laughs> go away. I'm not changing it. I'm not changing anything just because you didn't like some element, right? All right, rant over. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was super, super ranty. <laughs> um, let's see here. Will you change out the blade on your shaman to a different seal? 
Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm okay with S30V for now. I've never had an issue with S30V. I'm just, I mean, it's boring. I think that's what most people have an issue with. It's just been around for a long time, right? Um, but uh, will I change it out? Yeah. If uh, Spyderco stops doing all of their sprints in satin finishes, I don't care what steel they come out with. This is Excalibur we're talking about. You come out with my dream steel and it's not tumbled, I won't buy it. <laughs> it has to be tumbled. It has to be. That's what I want. It's because the corners of the shaman blade, it's not a big deal, but the corners up here on those satin finished blades are so sharp. Anyone who's got a recent Rex 45 shaman, God dang. I mean, yeah, if you're going to strike flint on it all day, okay, right? But that's not what I'm doing with my knives. I want it tumbled. I like those smooth edges. It's nice. It's not shredding my fingernails when I'm, you know, presenting that part of the knife to my fingernail. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, man, it sounds ridiculous, but yeah, seriously, S45VN, I'll take M390, right? Take S35VN. Um, I want those. I want those stainless steels that trade off toughness and edge retention somewhere in that area, and I want it tumbled. That's what I want, and I will wait. I waited a long time for the shaman scales. I'm patient. I'm going to complain while I'm waiting, but I will wait. Let's see here. Oh, crown the spines for sure. If Spyderco rounded the spine, crowned it, right? Oh, God. Oh, please. That would just be beautiful. I would love that. Beautiful. Chris Reeve. Uh, Chris Reeve knives. Excellent how they do that. Um, let's see here. That's true, Neves, I could. I, I don't know why that skipped my mind. Huh. Yeah, that opens up a new avenue. Wow, how stupid am I that I couldn't think of that? Of course I could send it off to be tumbled. Thank you. Thank you, Neves. Well, there you go. Now when the steel that I want comes out, I'll go ahead and buy it, and I'll give Neves credit for giving me the idea because my stupid brain couldn't <laughs> think of that. I can't believe, of course, of course, I could send that. I'm sending the scales off to be textured. Why couldn't I send the blade off to be tumbled, right? That's true. Maybe because I want that factory fresh edge. I don't know. That's one thing. If I'm going to, if that's one nitpick that'll come up in my mind later is, ah, it'll have to be resharpened. It'll be a different edge. Is that what I want? I don't know. Depends on, I guess, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Be cool to have a, a professionally done mirror edge on a shaman that's tumbled otherwise. Ooh, ooh, yeah, I think I would pay for that because I can't do that myself. Uh, ooh, yeah, Kyle Roberts, MC, do you want me to send you my 4V red St. Nick shaman? Yeah, that'd be cool. I would like to look at that. That's, that's it, though. Uh, that is literally the last knife that I can accept right now. <laughs> I have so much. It is crazy. My next week... I review on average, I do on average, because I pre-record content, I record four videos a day. Four videos a day, five days a week, I do 20 videos a week on average. And I have to keep, I have to do that to get through these knives that I have over to the side and get them back to people in the promised amount of time. Um, so I can literally only accept Kyle's <laughs> Shannon, so. Uh, let's see here. How much is my collection worth? I have no idea. I don't know. I, I, I only think of that in terms of like it's in the moment because everything is a keeper until I see something that I want and then I sell the things that I can part with. And I, like I said, I sell them to a huge discount to patrons. So I don't, I've never thought of the collection as a whole, right? It's just, they're just knives that I love until I find something that I think I'll love more. Speaking of that, the next major purchase for me will absolutely 100% be a uh, full titanium 20 CV 8020. For the love of all things holy, if you're in this um, live stream right now and you have currently in your possession a full titanium uh, Andrew Demko 8020, um, with a 20 CV blade and it is um, it has the slot 
please message me if you will sell it. I will buy it. Uh, I will buy it very quickly. Um, let's see here. Knife at the knife left, the bottom corner, right here. This is the Liang Ma Lanny. Very impressive. This is my. This is believe it or not, it's the first time I've ever handled a Liang Ma design. Uh, this is extremely impressive. I'm actually going to be talking with Liang Ma about that one. I've, I've talked to them a little bit on Instagram. I'm going to talk to them some more about that. That is, that's very impressive for what it costs. Josh Woolard, thank you so much for the donation. EDC for all your anodizing needs. Well, there you go. If I, if, if anybody needs anodizing, um, you can check out his Instagram at j.w.edc for all your anodizing needs. <laughs> Yeah, and that's totally okay, by the way. If you guys want to utilize Super Chat and you want me to plug something, yeah, you can always do that. I don't have a problem with that at all. So, yeah, check him out on Instagram. What's the CRKT uh, price? Is it worth it? This is a pretty impressive CRKT. This is the M40-3. has an adjustable detent. That's what that little hole is right there. You can adjust it with a T6. It's using the deadbolt lock. Very cool. I got two complaints so far. Number one, the act, the flipping action's great, especially considering you can adjust it, right? It's not super smooth, and what I want to do with it is push this button down and whip it closed. It takes quite a whip to do that. I'm not going to say it's gritty. It just feels tight. So maybe another adjustment could change that. I've already tried messing with the pivot. That doesn't work. The other thing that really makes me mad is they're using that 1.41 whatever steel that's it's not good for um they want i think a hundred for this crkt just use the same steels that we're used to seeing in this price range and you're good you're gold change the steel and i could deal with the action because this thing is pretty cool this is an evolved form of the m16 i mean i'm sure a lot of you guys can see that aluminum bolster this is not carbon fiber it looks like carbon fiber i think it's just uh uh, FRN or some injectionable plastic that's got texturing on it to look like it's okay. I like how it looks, right? You switch that out to G10 um, and uh, you change the steel, and yeah, for sure. Really like the, plof the profile, the flipping action's good. It's one of the cooler looking knives they've come out with. It's centered, it's solid, right? But the steel, WTF. Uh, open the two black ones next to the blue one. The two black ones. Well, here's the, the blue one. So there's this one. That, this is the Kershaw Launch 13, which I, I just was certain was an Elijah Isham design. Apparently it isn't. Apparently it's an in-house design. That little symbol right there. Um, stupidly thin behind the edge. My God, stupidly thin. Very gem. It's the the pivot is like looks like a, a you know a gem that's been cut. Really cool. Um, I'm, I'm not, it's not 100% my cup of tea aesthetically, but it's built well. And then this is the other black one is the uh, Civivi uh, Ortis. And this particular one is carbon fiber and Damascus. Um, boy, if they made a G10 version of this and it was for 40 bucks, that, that might be on the list for one of the best budget knives ever. Let's see here. A holy hinderer, Batman. Yeah, you want me to flip all the hinders? Uh, Triway Eclipse Generation Six Triway Bowie. We have the hinder Emmet, which is not flippable because it's a fixed blade. Gen Six uh, Harpoon Spanto S thirty five VN Triway with a solid uh, smooth titanium scale. DLT exclusive non-flipper fullard spear in m390 has the scale switched out for the jade we're going to put that one back so i can flip these brand new cpm s45 vn spanto uh you can see right there with my um very special and will never ever be sold full unmilled textured titanium scale i'm sure more of these will come out they just they'll they'll be milled and then the legendary Dark Horse XM24 black stonewashed Spanto with blacked out hardware and a textured carbon fiber scale. Probably also not going anywhere anytime soon. So there you go. 
There is a G10 Ortis for 40. Link it to me. I'll buy it tonight. I'll buy that tonight. Link it to me. Uh, email me at metalcomplex87 at gmail.com or link it to me on Instagram. As far as I knew, um, they were only an FRN. I will buy that. I want that. Send it to me. I will buy it. <laughs> the fellow there, MC, have you ever thought about coordinating with DLT for an exclusive Excalibur run? Um, I, 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 I know you guys laugh when I say this, but I, I don't know that I'm important enough. <laughs> I just, I don't, I always feel weird. I mean, like, that would be super cool, but when it, whenever it crosses my mind, there's this feeling of, like, who, did, you know, I, I always worry that they're going to be like, who does this guy think he is? I had just, the channel has grown really fast, right? There's, I, I'm really appreciative of that, but... And even though I've been collecting, buying, selling, trading, been a part of the knife world for a decade, I'm fairly new as far as, you know, people with an audience go on YouTube and Instagram. There are people who've been around much longer than me. So I don't know. I've, I just, I want to tread lightly and I want to build good relationships with people and I want people to get to know me. The retailers that I work with, they've, they've been really good to me. And um, I just, I want to build a firm relationship with them you know before i even discuss something like that way down the road it sounds crazy i used to um i used to sell cars and i used to sell digital advertising and something that was really important is to me was developing relationships long-term relationships so that they you know so that they want to come back and interact with you and and i found that doing that over years at a time was the that was the best way to do it was to let people know that you were legitimate and not just you know looking for a short-term quick you know a, a quick sale right uh i want i this is this is long term for me this is very important what what's been built here so i guess my relationships with retailers and other other names in i've community it's really important to me to make sure that it's that the foundation is solid okay rant over but those are my thoughts on that um oh yeah smash the like button there's 68 likes and 166 people watching we should have 165 likes and one salty dislike at least right or 10 salty dislikes whatever you guys feel like doing tonight that's fine uh let's see here is the launch 13 mine no it's not mine it was sent in by a viewer um heading to bed have a good one john walker thank you so much buddy have a good night you gave me a salty like <laughs> we got 20 out of that only 20 people were like, all right, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time and hit that like button, right? <laughs> Other people are like, no, I can't be bothered. To, I can't be bothered to do that. It's too, it's too much. It's working. My sarcasm is working. It's gaining likes. Yay. My ego is flourishing, soaring like the burning phoenix, like the burning wings of a phoenix. How poetic. Uh... Like me, dislike me, just don't nothing me. Yes, that is absolutely how YouTube works. Leave a like or a dislike, but for the love of God, don't leave nothing. <laughs> uh, that people always people ask me all the time, why are people disliking this video? Ah, it's okay, let them dislike it. It helps. It's okay. It it seriously does. Even when people dislike it, this whole live stream could get you know, the same amount of likes and dislikes, that's better than getting the, the same amount of likes but none of the dislikes. It's actually better for my channel to get that. So, yeah, do whatever you want. I like the likes more. You know, that makes me feel good. That's about it. Uh, let's see here. Joining now, what's your opinion of the Hinderer Bowie? Uh, that's definitely the pokiest blade shape. And it's probably the most aesthetically striking blade shape. The other big benefit is this little notch right here. When you're choking up, it's got a perfect thumb rest position. Perfect. If you're going to do detailed work, right? Oh, this is just as butter comfortable. God dang. Something that's not present in, you know, like the Spanto. You can choke up on it, but you're just sliding all over the place, right? It's like a pack of wet hot dogs up there. Boy, that was a gross analogy sorry about that um let's see the youtube algorithm will actually push stuff on you that you don't like to keep you enraged 
<laughs> uh, that's an interesting strategy. I find myself enraged with YouTube quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Good turn heel like in pro wrestling. Start a war with Slicey. Yeah, I, I know some channels do that where they, they, they create a fake feud. But I feel like the long-term damage of faking something like that would not be worth it. Like, Slicey and I have done jokey battles, and we'll probably still do, like, jokey. We'll probably do another hinderer battle at some point. I don't know if it sounds like fun, but I I, I can't... It's really hard for me to fake something like that, because I, I don't, I don't want to lie. <laughs> I don't want to mislead people. Some people, even if most people know that it's a joke... And it, and it creates, you know, beneficial uh, traffic. There's still going to be some people who think that it's serious and then butterfly effect because of how the internet works. I don't, I, I think that, I think when it comes all the way back around, I think it could end up hurting me. So I, I don't want to create fake drama. <laughs> mm. No, Slicey, sl I, I consider Slicey an absolute equal who has you know just as much knowledge when it comes to knives as i do um he and i get along super well and i enjoy his content in fact i often will go watch his reviews on something i actually bought the ortis after watching his review legitimately I, I told him i said i watched a review i ordered one um so yeah um i very much respect slicey and you know he helped me out when i was nothing and he had he was at like 5,000 and I was just nothing. I was just a little, little confused little duckling swimming around in a pond. No idea what the hell I was doing. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, I enjoy both of y'all. Great content and variety is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Variety is key. Uh, if I stuck with, I know some channels like just do higher end stuff or just do budget stuff. Uh, and not, you know, not everybody has access to everything. I'm fortunate in that, you know, people are willing to send me almost anything that I ask for. That's really cool. Um, but variety is key. Um, Mr. C, thank you for that donation. Very nice of you. If the knife world had drama, I would be very much disappointed. Yeah, that's something we have to appreciate about our community is that Drama exists, but it's usually pretty brief. It can burn hot at times, but it's pretty brief. Knife people are pretty good about, you know, either they decide, all right, we're done with this, we're going our separate ways and we're not bringing it up again, or they work it out. You know, it's usually not like this big, long, terrible feud that everybody, that, those suck, right? I mean, it, I mean, I understand there's entertainment value sometimes with stuff like that. But after a while, people are like, oh my God, grow up and work it out, right? With the knife community, people generally don't have to deal with that as much, or at least from my perspective. And that's something I like, you know? And like, case in point, have you ever gone to a different type of channel and watched a live stream and just seen the mess in the comments section, like in their chat? It's just a freaking mess. And there's just a bunch of jerks in there just saying whatever. My live streams are not necessarily gigantic, but there's 150 of you in here, and you're all being civil and nice and respectful to each other. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good representation of how the knife community generally acts. Keith Luster, thanks for the donation. Knight, have a good one. Hey, thanks for stopping in, man. Appreciate it. Um, do I ever talk to Nut and Fancy? I have never talked with him, but I have very much enjoyed his content over the years, for sure. That guy's it. Does he have a million subs? Is he close to a million? God dang, that guy just blew up. I, I think I started watching him around 80,000. Let's see here. Looked at Blade HQ for years, but only just realized it's based in Utah, the state I actually live in. You should go visit them. If I lived in Utah, I would definitely go visit them for sure. Hey, did you guys know that... Um, I wanted to bring this up. I don't. Everyday City Carry is not in here. Did you know that Ben... Uh, 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 like from uh, Blade HQ did an interview with Everyday City Carry. It's his most recent upload. It was really good. Um, you should, you guys should definitely go check that out. It was very entertaining, and it's really cool that he did that. Um, again, I mean, uh, it's proof that Everyday City Carry's channel should be substantially larger than it is. Um, 
but not just saying that the, the, just because certain people want to talk to him, that's that's the only quality, right? No, he's just easy to talk to, and he's got good content. So subscribe and check out that video. Ben Peterson, if I'm not, am I am I stupid? It's Ben Peterson, right? I always want to call him Ben Blue. <laughs> uh, but anyways, oh, Blade Ops is in Utah. I don't know. I don't know where Blade HQ is listed, so it's, it's Blade Ops is in Utah. Okay, where, where's Blade HQ located? Uh, let's see here. The Wee Banter looks like it's made of Legos. It's a simple, it's a simple design, but it, I mean, you know, Ben designed the perfect knife for himself, and it also translates to pretty much the everyman. So, smart move. And he legitimately put his own thoughts and ideas into it, right? Uh, I think some people thought that he was just making something that would sell well. No, I think that makes perfect sense. I've been watching their stuff for years and listening to him talk and what he looks for in a knife. He literally made exactly what he thought was perfect. And it just happened to be really popular. What is up, guys? Yeah, I, that is just permanently, permanently stamped into my brain. I love that. Wine or whiskey tonight? Cheap uh, Gatorade, <laughs> carbonated Gatorade, with a little bit of a, yeah, a little, little baby mule kick in it. Um, yeah, yeah, that is where Nick lives. Um, let's see here. Uh, that's my best Ben impersonation. He doesn't do anything else that. Um, it's like really, it's not like Nick, you know, like it, Ben, Ben just has that one thing that I, I can just barely imitate. Just got my Tai Chavez Tanto in today. That's awesome. That's a great knife. I, I was really tempted to pick one of those up, but I didn't. Um, let's see here. Blade HQ and Blade Ops are in Utah. Oh, they're both in Utah. Okay. And you can't get to Blade HQ storefront cause, oh, that, yeah. Okay. Um, just got my first tinder because of your reviews. XM18 3.5 skinny sheep's foot JG10. Nice. Very nice first tinder. The skinny is probably the best. Any variant of the skin, skinny is probably the very best first tinder. I, I hope you enjoy it. Have you heard of the BRS Evolve Imp? Um, I'm familiar with BRS Evolve because they just sent me some knives, but not the Imp. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I'll be working with them a lot more in the future because the stuff they sent me was really good. Care to give some hinder advice? Sure, Steve, uh, sorry, let me, Steve Milk? Yeah, for sure. Uh, what, what would you, what sort of advice are you looking for? Excuse me. <clears throat> I will check out the imp. Do I like the Pena X series? Yes, I do. Very much. Absolutely. Very good knives. There's a new one. Oh, tomorrow morning you guys are getting a, um, a rundown of... Um, well, no, I'll save it. Just wait. Saturday's a fun day. I got two really cool videos for Saturday. You just have to tune in. Vice, get one, period. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I get it. Like, people look at them and say, they're like, well, I need to know... Hey, I, I got more questions. I need more details. Uh, tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews. Shout out. Yeah, for sure. Tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews. Check out his YouTube channel. Thanks for the donation. Nice of you to shout out somebody else. Yeah, check out Tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews. If I'm not mis mistaken, he's also in the Apex Passeron group, which means some of the knives that I have yet to review might already be on his channel. How do I not go into debt buying hinder knives? <laughs> Don't collect them. Buy them, take a small loss, and pick up the next one that you want. Don't collect hinder knives, right? And budget correctly. That's how you don't go into debt. Uh, let's see. Looking for Steve's question. I don't see it yet. Maybe he's typing it up. Uh, have you had the chance to use a Rockstead? Wondering if the blades live up to the hype. As, as far as I understand, they do a zero edge, and because of their geometry uh, on the spine and the geometry of the edge, and they're incredible, uh, the one that I had was a mirror finish. You combine 
the zero edge with that geometry and with a super slick surface, I'm going to guess that the whole high speed low drag thing is no further exemplified than in a Rockstead. I have not used one, I've only experienced one, the Higo 2, and it was one of the most incredible and beautiful things that I've ever handled. It was also very comfortable. If I did want to use it, I would imagine that thing would be extremely performance oriented. What do I use to store my knives? My wife has this uh, multi-drawer cabinet thing that she bought for me a long time ago and it's beautiful. It's got a glass top so I can always see my, uh, from the top down, I can always see my rotation. There's a video here recently about my setup. Um, if you want to watch, it's like the dungeon tour. It was um, just a few videos back. If you want to see where I record and where I keep my knives, um, you can see it in that video. Steve Milk it sa says, I just got an 0562 CG. Love the grind. And the ago has me thinking of getting one, but the 0562 blade is too big, which hinders the closest to it grind and thickness wise with a smaller blade. Well, the, the closest thing to the 0562 with a smaller blade is actually the Z, or I'm sorry, the Hinder XM18 three and a half inch slicer. It's actually going to be thicker on the spine, but it's nowhere near as tall. Um, so you have a, sh not a shorter blade in terms of length, but in terms of height, the skinny version of that, which is hard to find is, is skinnier on the spine than both the XM18 three and a half inch standard thickness and the ZT0562, which comes in at 155 thousandths. It's also, again, not as tall. If you go to the three inch, you're going to get a blade that is shorter than the three and a half inch and the same thickness on the spine as the skinny. And that blade is even shorter, not like in, in terms, not in terms of length, but in terms of height, it's even shorter than that. So I would say the skinny three and a half inch slicer is extremely similar. It's literally the same grind or the three inch uh, slicer. Uh, what are the ergos or the combat shroud on it? What are the better, or yes, and which is better ergos, the combat shroud on or the eclipse? The eclipse is way, way easier to hang on to. The combat shroud on is good, but if I was gonna like really use a knife hard in a slippery environment, I would, I would go with the Eclipse. Kyle Roberts says, MC, talk me out of buying uh, that Damascus CVV on your table. I'm drawn to it for some reason. I, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'll tell you right now, here's what the review is gonna consist of. This is an incredible knife and the only gripe that I have is the shape of the bill on the pocket clip. Just shave this part off and let it be a swoop. Other than that, it's essentially perfect. This is one of the best knives that Civivi has ever come out with. Uh, the Damascus and carbon fiber one is the one I'd go with, unless I get proven wrong about the G10 version tonight. I was under the assumption all the cheaper ones were FRN, um, but apparently there might be a G10 one. Yeah, Kyle, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to buy it. <laughs> God. It's 113. All right, it's pickle time. Whatever that means, it's time. Five minutes. We've, we've gone over because of the stimulating conversation. I had no idea what time it was. You guys can ask whatever type of questions you want, knife related or non knife related. I actually enjoy this segment where we, you guys ask, you can ask me questions that are not knife related if you want to. I'll answer most things. Um, or you can, whatever, say you know, people do the pickle thing. Um, let's see here. Does the carbon fiber version of the K2 have texture? This is this is not textured. I don't know if there's another version that is, but it, that that one's not textured. Um, Seth Lynch, I have no idea. I don't. I have never needed a knife for that. So, <laughs> um, let's see here. Worst cut I've ever had. I'll show you the scar. It, I don't know if it'll show up on camera. You see this line right here that starts here and it actually goes up to about right here. Um, now, I also have this scar. That's my worst scar and that is from um, my best friend pulling my, um, my uh, beanie over my face when I was nine and shoving me down a hill in Kansas and crashing through a dead rose bush. <laughs> That's my worst scar. My worst cut with a knife was this, um, and this was a 
I think that was the original VECP uh, that got me there. But yeah, I think that's my worst cut. Um, and then I've got a big cut on my collarbone from my my actually the 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 metal strap on my football pads got knocked loose and then i got hit from the other direction and it jammed the uh strap back under my pads and it actually sliced right uh, right almost perfectly in line with my collarbone there's a big cut there too and then there's one on my back from so oh i i, I was trying to do a double backflip off the diving bar i used to be a lifeguard and i landed on the diving board and sliced my back pretty bad and i guess there's one on my leg from I don't know. There, I, I guess there are quite a bit of cuts. I'm not really sure what all of them are from. I used to work construction too, so I have a little bit of damage. Um, <laughs> Grumpy Cat says, Kansas has a hill. Yeah, we have one. And that asshole pushed me down it. <laughs> we're still friends. We've been friends since we were two. My best friend in the whole world have been friends since we were two. We are still friends. But he shoved me through a rose bush. I had tumbled for a long ways too. I tumbled probably... I'm going to get like 25 yards. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Did I get my wife back for the shot of tequila after the hot sauce? I, there is no getting my wife back. It's it just not, it's not possible. I just, it's not, it's not the same thing. I just can't do it. <laughs> Shaken or stirred? Probably stirred. I don't like people shaking my alcoholic beverages. Just makes me think that it's losing its quality. Stirred. So not what James Bond likes, right? Shaken, not stirred, is that what he says? <laughs> uh, let's see. How do I feel about convex grinds? I think they make a lot more sense in a big meaty fixed blade. Something you're gonna use to chop with a steel that has a lot of toughness. Uh, let's see here. I'm glad you guys think that's funny. <laughs> uh, Quok fam, yes. But I'm a knife channel, so. And I'm not a firearms guy. It's not that kind of thing. I don't collect them. Um, how's that hinder or fixed blade working out? Any more use? I have not used it, but I sure do love just holding it on the couch while we walk the, watch the blacklist on uh, Netflix. <laughs> Let's see here. What brand of kitchen knives do you own? Farberware. Farberware kitchen knives because I'm cheap when it comes to fit the kitchen knives. They all came in a set, uh, clamshell packaging, if that gives you a good idea. Uh, Chisel Grind 229 is interesting. Jeff Carter, hello. Uh, I'm glad you made it. It's going to end here in just a little bit, but I'm glad you made it. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think about one. Favorite Civivi. Boy. <laughs> it was the Praxis, but honestly, I'm right now I'm <laughs> I'm kind of crushing hard on this guy. I can actually get my finger into that choil. Not perfect. It's about the same as the Hinderer. This is about a seven and a half inch knife, and it's super lightweight. I really like this. This is really good. I don't know yet. It's hard to say. This or the Praxis. Um, let's see here. Uh, Anodize my Thai flight titanium shaman scales today. That's cool. Your name always cracks me up. No one cares. <laughs> it's a funny precursor to any comment that you leave. I do care, but it's funny to read that. Favorite hinderer? Favorite hinderer ever, probably is the uh, the no choil, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the non-flipper uh, fullard spear from DLT Trading because it creates the ergonomic experience that I want and because you can get, wedge your finger in there, it has it's actually reverse flickable, uh, co comfortably reverse flickable and the detents lightened up. So it's, oh, that's a, that's a good one there. God, anybody who managed to pick that one up when they did the runs has got the same, probably has the same opinion. XM24 and S45 VN, I can almost guarantee that they will do that. I don't know that for sure, but I'm, I'm guessing they will. All right, so I'm going to pick one more question. I'm going to pick the meatiest, juiciest question, right? So think of the weirdest, most ridiculous stuff that you can, and I will decide. And then I'm going to end the live stream. 
Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet. The meaning of life is 42, right? But that doesn't count. <laughs> Pickle or banana. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to table the lost cause because that's a decent question. Uh, did you ever have a dog named Toto? I'll go ahead and answer that one. No, but I'll, I'll, I'll still pick another one. Um, <laughs> yeah, hurry up and get your likes in, you heathens. <laughs> uh, what gives you the right? <laughs> oh, man, that definitely was the funniest question. <laughs> That definitely was the funniest question of the night. <laughs> oh man, let's see. What would you, what would it take to get you to never use? Oh, there's a juicy one. Jensen Ezetea. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. What would it take to get you to never use a hinderer again? Rick Hinderer would literally have to turn into essentially the opposite person that he is. I like Kinder and Knives for their consistent quality, right? If we're talking about the knife itself, right? the profile, the aesthetics, right? There's a million different things that I like about the knife. But what really drives it home for me is Rick Hinderer. Um, Rick Hinderer is a, a true American. Uh, he does honest work. He is constantly striving to make his product better, to meet the needs of the people who are interested in buying his products. He's not a social media presence in the in the sense of he's just like hey look at me he's there if people have a question and um in my experience he still doesn't really know or care who i am and that's fine but what i appreciate especially seeing him on instagram and seeing him in the um the uh uh the facebook group the collectors group on um facebook he will engage in conversation with people he'll answer questions he's very helpful he's never rude um, he's just a genuine person and it just makes me really happy to buy his knives. It's an American product. It's a quality made product. You're buying it from somebody who really cares about what he's doing, man. It's just, just so good. It's just so wholesome American. I just, Rick Hinder is just such a great guy. Um, so what would it take me to get to, to, to not carry his knives ever again? He would just have to turn into a soulless, passionless jerk who doesn't care about anything, gave up on his country, right? I don't see that ever happening. Um, Rick Hinderer seems to have been a good person from the start, the moment that I was aware of him, and he's only become better as time has gone on. And his, his company is successful, and it's so deserving, right? I just, I, lo I love talking about this, by the way. It sounds like I'm just ready to kiss his butt, but seriously, this is how I feel. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud to own his knives and I, I think they're great. So I couldn't see that ever happening, but that's what it would take quite a bit. It would take quite the 180 for sure. If you, uh, are getting to the point where you are considering spending a, a serious amount of money on a knife that will basically be an heirloom, right? Something that you're going to use for the rest of your life and then hand down. I don't think there's any better knife in the price range, uh, in the 400 ish, -ish price range, right? If we're talking about that than a hinderer knife. I think that's where you should be. You want a knife that's gonna last you for the rest of your life and, and hand it down, right? And then you can feel good about, you know, if you live in the United States and you care about United States manufacturing, I understand not everybody in here is from the United States, but I am, so that's the perspective I'm giving. Um, yeah, you get to feel good about that. You bought a true American product and it's made well by somebody who really cares. All right, guys, hinderer worth the cost? Absolutely, 100%. I will, I will never stray from that. They are absolutely 100% worth the money. Okay, guys, um, I think that's going to be pretty much it. I'm, I'm so appreciative of everybody who popped in tonight, despite me not giving much of a warning and much, much of a, an advance notice. Um, this was as fun as it's always been. I love just doing regular knives and nonsense and chatting with you guys. It's always fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's live stream. I'm sorry if I didn't get something out that people were wanting to know about or had questions about. Um, but guess what? We'll do it again next week. Uh, most likely Saturday next week. I know I said that last time, but this was a kind of a surprise event for tomorrow. So 
most likely Saturday. Lots of content. Two more videos coming up tomorrow that I think you guys will find very entertaining. And then The Knife Guy on Sunday and another entertaining video Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, coming to the live stream, everybody. Um, I hope you guys all have an excellent rest of your Saturday night and an excellent rest of your weekend. Bye.